bringing you the latest stories from all four corners of Figuria and the deepest reaches of space. With the news casting team you've come to trust, in depth reporting direct from the field, viewpoints and public opinions on the important issues, instant information from a semi omniscient perspective, magical tracking of intangible weather phenomena and the latest from the world of sports. Broadcast live from TV Tower in New Block City, this is the Nightly News at 9 with Phil and Sherry. Good evening, I'm Sherry Tiles. And I'm Phil Brickley. Our top story tonight, space robots have invaded Figuria. The invasion began early this morning- <clears throat> Excuse me, what's going on here? Who the block are you? <sighs> this is Robert Villain, our new sportscaster. You insisted we hire him yesterday. Yesterday? You expect me to remember something I did yesterday? I don't even remember what we're talking about. <sighs> what do you want, Robert? I want to know why you aren't reporting on Malifios. Malifi who? Well, Robert, this being the nightly news at nine, we try to report on new things every day. Malifios broke out of prison yesterday, and as Phil points out, yesterday is old news. So we simply had to find something new. Isn't that right, Phil? I agree with whatever Sherry said. Well, maybe Malifios hasn't had time to destroy New Block City because he's been too busy working for his new job. And maybe, if he wants to keep that job, he'll stop interrupting his boss and save his rant for his segment. Uh, yes, Sherry. I bend to your wishes. Did I miss something? Everything, darling. Everything. The Pinchbot invasion fleet arrived early this morning, landing all across Figuria. In spaceships shaped like enormous Pinchbots. After some initial reconnaissance, the Pinchbots regrouped into swarms, pinching everything in their path. There were a few reports of arms and legs pinched off, but no serious injuries. Due to their small size, the robots posed no serious threat. Most of them were destroyed by children and dogs. This afternoon, Phil and I had lunch at the gourmet restaurant Le Brique Très Chic. I had buttered croissants, red berry fricassee, and diamond juice. Phil had pizza. Correction, I had gourmet pizza. Would it kill you to eat something other than pizza for once? Sherry, I trust I don't need to remind you of the pretzel incident. Besides, it's my week to make decisions. I can eat all the pizza I want. In fact, I think I'll eat some right now. Mmm. Pizza. Bill, we're on the air. Hey, I was eating that. Shouldn't we be reporting on robots? Yes, uh, well, I was getting there. After lunch, we were driving back to the studio when we got stuck in a traffic jam. We went to investigate the traffic jam and encountered the Pinchbot Swarm. Though we were vastly outnumbered, we kept our cool and assumed a defensive position. As we fought the robots, we found two tactics particularly effective. Pulling off their pinchers to disarm them, and kicking them squarely in the circuit board to deactivate them. Within a few minutes, we disposed of all the pinch bots in the area and traffic started moving again. However, there are still many hostile pinch bots out there. If you encounter any, stay calm and use these tactics to defeat them. But one question still remains. Where did these robots come from? Why did they invade Figuria, and why didn't they have a better plan? That's three questions, darling. Three questions still remain. Where did these robots come <sighs> from? Why did they To find the answers Figuria? to these and why other questions, the fearless Reportobotophilia has journeyed to the Pinchbot Mothership to interview their leader. We'll check in with her right after this commercial break. Zero, zero, one. Zero, one, one. One zero one zero one one zero zero one zero one 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 zero one zero one one 
zero one orange one zero 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 one zero one one zero orange one zero zero one zero one orange one 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 zero 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 orange 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 one zero one orange one orange zero orange 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 one orange zero orange 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 who needs binary when there's orange orange is the best destroy the green heathens welcome back we now go live to reporter Botophilia, who has successfully infiltrated the Pinchbot mothership. That's right, Shelly. Unfortunately, my attempt at uh, espionage failed, and so I've had to get information the hard way. <laughs> Pinchbots everywhere getting in my way. Pinchbots in my hair pinching on my face. Even a reporter bought a few of the pinches. Here's the chase. The Pinchbot leader bot. I'm gonna find you, bot. You're gonna find me, not reporter bot of Robophilia. Now it's time for sports with Steve Flatwise. No, Phil, Steve was kidnapped yesterday. Hmm. It's time for hostage report with Steve Flatwise. Try again, honey. Hostage hoedown? No, Phil, now it's time for sports with our new sportscaster, Robert Villain. Villain? Is he the leg shark? <sighs> we'll be right back. Robot, robot, robot! What am I gonna do with all these robots? Got more robots than you know what to do with? Yes, that's exactly my problem. 
Do you have a wonderful new product that can solve my predicament? Thank you, disembodied voice. You're just in time. I was talking to the robots. Let me start again. Robots. Got more robots than you know what to do with? Don't just stand around feeling useless. Start a robot rock band and tour the universe. Once you're bored of being famous, give back to the community by volunteering at your local library. Or join a ragtag sports team of lovable misfits who win in spite of overwhelming odds. Star in a robot sitcom that highlights your wacky personalities and snappy dialogue. Or just get away from it all by renting a summer house in the pastels, Figuria's most elite beach utopia. But the coolest thing you could do is to enlist in the Green Militia with all your friend bots. As part of the Green Militia, you'll risk battery and bolt as you fight the good fight against the evil Orange Army. Even if you get deactivated, you can Rest assured that you spent your brief, robotic life fighting for the noblest cause, proving green is better than orange. The Green Militia. We want you. Do not join the Green Militia if you are old, weak, or rebellious. Only young, virile conformists need enlist. Sports. Why do they exist? Figurian scholars have pondered this ponderous question for ages without an answer to all their pondering. Some hypothesize that sports are symbolic reenactments of an ancient war between Figurians and a race of tiny spherical creatures. Others claim sports were invented by the dragons, so they'd have something to bet their hordes of gold upon. However, after one day of intensive research, I, Robert Villain, have deduced the real reason sports were invented. It is painfully obvious that sports were invented by some goody, good, good superheroes ugh, in order to foil the plans of evildoers everywhere. To prove my point, here are just a few examples that Jeff and I caught on film today of villains having their plans foiled by sports. Do I have to do something to make the clips play? Is there a button under the desk? is any villain to succeed against this never-ending proliferation of games and names? Blocker, block ball, brick ball, base brick, basket block, brickety block, blockety brick, brickety blockety blue ball. Since the dawn of balls, evildoers everywhere have toiled futilely against the... We interrupt your regularly scheduled program for this emergency address from the Toy Master General of Figuria. My fellow Figurians, today our great land was hostily invaded by tiny robots. Tomorrow, our toy stores will be invaded by tinier robots. You can get your very own mini pinch bot for the low, low price of 10 gold. In response, I have changed the toy threat level from fad to craze. Go line up at your local toy store now. And bring your riot gear, there will be stampedes. We now return to your pointless lengthy rant, still in progress. The fate of all our children is in our hands. <clears throat> Therefore, as the newly appointed sportsmaster, I hereby nullify all currently existing sports. <laughs> However, I have devised a number of new sports, both logical and useful, to replace the old ones. Number one. 
Breakdown. This game is as simple as its name. All you need to play is a tall building or a similarly well-constructed object. The goal is to take the object apart as fast as possible. You can play alone or competitively. It is best played in a large metropolitan area, such as New Block City. Well, what are you waiting for? Start playing Breakdown now! Seriously. Go. Well, for those of you still sitting around watching your television instead of destroying it, uh, number two, Ice Blocky. What do you think you're doing? Why, hello, Sherry. I was just outlining some new sports to replace the ones I annulled. Yes, I can see that. You do realize that you don't have the authority to do that, right? I don't. But I'm the sports master. No, you're the sports caster. There's no such thing as a sports master. You're supposed to report on existing sports, not invent new ones. But that's so mundane. It's your job, and you'll do it right or you won't do it at all. Now sit quietly while we finish the rest of the show. Phil, what happened to our desk? It's Breakdown, Sherry, it's Breakdown! It's the greatest game ever! Oh, for the love of brick! Come on, let's play Breakdown with our backdrops! Someone cut to commercial! Phil, no! Some crooks are robbing a bank, and now they're getting away. But they won't get away, cause here come the police. Police show! Police show! It's a show about police, and we always catch the crooks. Next Bluesday on Police Show, Chuck Malarkey is a tough as brick cop. Who doesn't always play by the rules? Malarkey! But when Malarkey City is invaded by a new threat, he'll have to team up with a cop who's even crazier than him. Malarkey, meet your new partner. Greetings, I am K0P3R Hopper. I am skilled in over six million forms of torture. Some cowboy bots invaded our town, and now they're looking for trouble. So we're gonna give them trouble, cause that's our middle name. Police show, police show, with Chuck Trouble Malarkey, and K0P Trouble 3R. Ha 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 ha, where is your leader bot? And don't give us no malarkey. Will Malarkey and his new partner be able to save the city? Or will this be his final case? Tune in next Blues Day. Only on Town TV. Police show! Police show! Now we're crashing through the windows and searching without a warrant. There's some unexplainable explosions and some token female officers. Police show! Police show! It's a show about police! Sherry, did you notice anything strange about that commercial? No, Phil. I was too busy rebuilding our desk. Now hand me that two by three. That Robocop was just like Robophilia. Lots of robots look the same. They're mass produced. Now let's get back to the show. I'm going to investigate. Fine. Whatever you want, it's your week. Just don't get yourself decapitated. Sundar, isn't it about time for your forecast? <laughs> Oh, indubitably, Sherry. My apologies for the delay. I've just been having, oh, uh, a few fun placations with my new assistant. Oh, oh my, no worries. Oh. oh, yes, sorry for sticking you with the light shark today. I'll have Robophilia oh. take him tomorrow. No worries, Sherry. Everything's wonderful, magical, lovely. <laughs> Well, lovelies, I must admit, I was fibbing just a moment ago. Everything's not lovely. Particularly not if you are mixed up in that brouhaha between green and orange. <laughs> oh no, in that case, you are quite possibly dead or in horrible agony. Oh my! Yes, the war rages on, and it is worse than I feared. While I prepare a demonstration, 
The Eye of Eyes will explain. Eye of Eyes, roll the montage. That's not the montage! Stop playing games or I'll rip the orange right out of you! <laughs> I only comply with requests in rhyme. Are you trying to make me angry? Affirmative. It also appears that my attempts have been successful. <laughs> oh, no worries. Now, about that montage. Oh, eye of eyes, you see the scene. Against their will, they fight and bleed. Reveal to us those orange and green. As you say, I must obey. These two figurines were total strangers with no reason to hate one another. But then their pants made them mortal enemies. Even minuscule traces can affect behavior. These green-eyed pinchbots were distracted from their initial prey by a small patch of orange. Related hues have also been affected. These two good friends became vaguely annoyed at one another because they were wearing lime green and orangish yellowish. If you want to survive until White's Day, change into neutral colored clothes and hide in a cave. Of course, not everyone can change their color so easily. Master Silverspine is struggling with his green demons. Let's see if he's succumbed yet. <laughs> Take that, you fiendish carrots! <laughs> oh my! Excuse me for slipping away there. Ah, so, I have brought our Legshark correspondent to this pumpkin patch to demonstrate the effects of wearing clothing during a color war. It's widely believed that leg sharks will eat anything they can get their jaws around. And though they eat many things that other creatures would find repulsive or inedible, leg sharks can be picky eaters. The favorite food in all of Figuria is the head melon. They will eat practically anything shaped like a head melon. Crystal balls, skulls, Figurian heads, bombs. Brickety blockety blue balls, lamp bulbs, you name it. Try to feed them one of these despicable pumpkins, though, and they steadfastly refuse, as they are quite allergic to them. However, if we put this wonderful, magical, green hat on his chin, the leg shark is instantly overwhelmed with righteous green vengeance. Crush them good, Legsley. Destroy the heretical orange spheres. <laughs> oh my, I seem to be losing my grip. So much for impartial reportage. <laughs> no one makes a fool of green. We shall rain destruction down upon Orange and all its followers. <laughs> Let's find something bigger and oranger to destroy. <laughs> Sherry, don't make me do the rest of the show this way. I, I feel so... Exposed. Maybe you should have thought of that before you tore the desk apart. It's not my fault. I was just doing what Robert said. So you finally remembered his name? Whose name? <sighs> Tune in again tomorrow for the latest news, weather, and sports. Only on the Nightly News at 9 with Phil and Sherry. Bringing you the stories that matter to us. Thank you so much for watching the Nightly News at 9, Chapter 2, Robots. This video has been a labor of love for me for the past three years. Uh, all told, more than 400 hours of animating time went into creating it. And that's on top of countless hours of uh, writing, building, uh, editing, and uh, voice acting. So uh, if you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it, I hope that you'll take a moment to support The Nightly News at Nine by purchasing a copy on Gumroad. There's a link down in the description where you can buy this video for just one dollar. That will give you access to stream the video without any advertisements in it, as well as download a file in case you want to put it on your iPhone, iPad, Android device, or anything else like that. 
Thank you to all my Kickstarter backers. Without your support, this video would not exist. I've got big plans for Chapter 3. Stay tuned for an update video about that in the near future. In the meantime, if you haven't already, please like, comment, share this video, subscribe to The Night News at 9. I thank you for being a loyal viewer and a fellow Figurian and whatever else you want to call yourself. You are all very special to me. Thank you very much. <laughs>